Hi, this is Jim Deeks. I'm going to run through uh, the Nozomi integrations with Cisco ICE. Uh, we have three use cases. Um, the first where we're sending uh, asset metadata to Cisco ICE. Um, the second where we're ingesting information from Cisco ICE uh, about the assets. And third, uh, where we want Cisco ICE to take action to, um, to actually do some active blocking uh, based on uh, you know, what Nozomi is seeing. So this is our, our Guardian sensor interface. Um, for that first use case where we're going to send information to ICE, I'm going to head into my data integration configuration screen, and I'm going to choose Cisco ICE from the dropdown. Um, we can see how this integration works. Essentially, we're going to leverage uh, their PX grid uh, to, to push information. We can see here the fields uh, that correlate from uh, the Nozomi database to the Cisco ICE fabric. Uh, we can see all of this asset information that can be passed along to Cisco ICE. And to configure this, you know, we'll put in the relevant uh, connection information, uh, certificates if we're going to be using those, um, and then you can uh, send specific uh, or use specific filters um, based on, uh, you know, what information you actually want to be sent to ICE. If there's a specific subnet or a specific asset. Uh, you can use everything that's, you know, in scope that Nozomi is seeing, that Nozomi is monitoring. So a lot of flexibility with what you can send over there. Um, the second, where we are ingesting information from Cisco ICE, we're going to leverage our smart polling feature within uh, the Nozomi product. So I'm going to add a new smart polling plan and choose Cisco ICE as my strategy. Um, I can specify how often I want this to run. Um, again, we put in the relevant connection information. We can use certificates if we need to. Uh, and then I'm going to specify a query. So this is where um, if you've got Cisco ICE that has asset information in there, maybe um, we can't see uh, the true MAC address for an asset because it's behind a firewall or something like that. And we're, you know, we're seeing the Fortinet MAC address. Um, you can query Cisco ICE to pull that over, and that allows Nozomi to have a much more complete picture um, for asset matching to do things like vulnerabilities and asset intelligence. So that's a use case where we'd be enriching the information that we have um, in the Nozomi database and in the Nozomi platform based on what uh, you know what Cisco ICE may be seeing. So that's um, the ingestion to Nozomi from Cisco ICE, and the third is. Uh, if we want to leverage Cisco ICE uh, as a firewall to take some active action based on what Nozomi is seeing, we can essentially block nodes from the network. So again, we've got our connection information here, um, and we are going to say, you know, enable nodes blocking, and we can um, uh, have different options here for, um, you know, based on what Nozomi is seeing. Will will communicate with Cisco ICE and they can block nodes from the uh, from the network. So I'm happy to discuss this in more detail. Uh, but again, those are the three use cases uh, where Nozomi is sending information to Cisco ICE about the assets that we are seeing. Uh, the second use case where we are pulling metadata about an asset from Cisco ICE into the Nozomi interface uh, to improve the the quality of our our data uh, that we have about the assets. And then third, where we're leveraging Cisco ICE to essentially do node blocking on the network um, to, to isolate nodes based on what we're seeing.